I've got one that can see. Logic before authority. Hi guys, this is Daniel Alexander Cannon here on Logic Before Authority. Well, we are going to take a look at Daniel 7 and Daniel 8, and maybe even Daniel 9. And I am going to pull the veil back on the majority of what we will see in this. Now, I've studied this, uh, these books for years, and I haven't talked about Daniel uh, 7 and 8 or any of Daniel 4 for a couple of years now. And I think there was a reason for that, because now when I read it, I, I can see more, and I'm going to share it with you. Um, that's going to be the first thing in this video, and then there's going to be a second part to this video. It's all going to be in this video, but I'm going to uh, make what I think is a big announcement. So um, I think uh, y'all guys will want to hang around to hear that. It's uh, Put it this way, it could and might benefit you in possibly a big way. So you're going to want to hang around for that. So now, let's take a look at Daniel 7 and Daniel 8. And let's identify who these uh, characters are in here that are written into 7 and 8. Um, well, let's get started. Get right into it. In the This is a Daniel 7. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions up of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spank and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. Well, first off, four winds of the heaven is talking about, that is a torus, that is a toroidal field, um, which I get into more in other videos and very much will be uh, here very, very, very soon. Um, so, uh, uh, and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse fr one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld to the wings thereof were plucked and it were lifted up from the earth and made stand upon, made stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it. And behold another beast, a second, like to a bear, and it was raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it, between the teeth of it, and they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and be, behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke into pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth, and hold on just a second. 
I want to highlight something for me to come back and come back and look at with you. Okay. A fire stream issued and came forth, and before him, forth from before him, thousands, thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. I beheld then, because of the voice of, of the great words, great words, which the horn spank I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given up and given to the burning flame. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion, and glory, and a kingdom, and all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by, and asked him the truth of all of this. So he told me, and made me know the interpretation of these things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from the others exceedingly dreadful, whose teeth were like iron or like were of iron, and his nails of brass, which devoured, break into pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn had eyes and a mouth that spank great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it into pieces the fourth kingdom is the fourth industrial revolution you heard that anywhere okay and the ten horns out of the kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them. And he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. Let me see if I can highlight that. There we go. 
but the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it until the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is everlasting, is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my, my connotations much troubled me, and my continents changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. Okay, now <clears throat> let's. Who I'm going? What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on to identify what's current in our day right now. Okay. Um, let's see. He says, "I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them a little horn." Okay before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn there were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Okay? So, we're talking about a horn. It's, it's calling him a horn. Now, everything that the Bible does, it does for a purpose. And... The using of the word horn is a way of uh, uh, symbolizing the power of this person, symbolizing even more than the power. It can be symbolizing who this person even is. You see, let's take a look at Strong's definition. Okay. Uh, Okay, let's take a look at uh, Strong's definition of the horns. Okay, it says uh, corresponding to, and it gives us a base word to look up, a base definition or base word, a horn literally or literally or for sound, horn, cornet. Uh, so let's click on that. Let's come over. And we got the uh, base word here, H7161. And says a horn as projecting by implication a flask a cornet by resemblance an elephant's tooth you know like the long ivory tusk that comes out looks like a looks like a trump uh, or a trumpet an elephant's tooth a corner of the altar uh, a peak of a mountain a ray of light figuratively power uh, Idiom, uh, uh, heel, horn, okay? So, let's back this back up here again and go back over here and let's turn off the strongs, okay? And it says, and it said that he uh, came up among them a little horn, well, what is a little horn? A little horn is considered to be a, a trump. Uh, by definition, a little horn is a trump or a trumpet or, or trumpets. You know, like when Trump ran for office and he ran with pence, it was Trump pence, trumpets. Nothing they do is by accident. Okay. Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. This is still to be uh, still to be played out. Okay. Which other horns will be plucked up? And behold, in this horn were eyes like the man, the eyes of man, and the mouth speaking great things. Now we already know it identified below that these are kings of the earth okay and we also know who speaks great things you know the same person that just re released a book called great again yes donald trump 
just released a book called Great Again. Okay, And of course, we know he uh, has the Make America Great Again slogan, which sounds great, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, sure, it does. Okay. Then it says here again on 9, it says, I beheld till the thrones were cats cast down in the ancient of days did sit whose uh, garment was uh, white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool which is his throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire his wheels as burning fire so let's take a look at the definition of wheels now we know they're talking about uh, God here right you know so let's look. Wheels. Uh, where'd it go? Eleven. Uh, Eleven. Why can I keep... Sorry about that, guys. My switch, I lose completely where I'm at. Okay, excuse me, nine. <laughs> okay, nine. So here we have nine right here. And it says in his wheels, H1535. Okay. See how the highlighting moved? I didn't move that. I didn't put that highlighting there. I put it down here, and that's why I couldn't find it. Or well, part of the reason. Wheels. Okay, it says corresponding to a wheel, and it gives us a base word definition. Let's take a look and see what that is. Come here, it's H1534. It says a wheel. By analogy, a whirlwind, a torus. Also dust as world, heaven, rolling thing, wheel. Now, we've already identified in previous videos what a Taurus is, and we will be going into the Iris world, part five, the final part, here very soon. But this is part of that same study, in a way. But Whirlwind. Whirlwind is a Taurus, and Heaven is a Taurus. God made man and earth and everything in his image. I know the Bible doesn't say that exactly. I'm saying it. Okay, so now we see a little bit additional there. Let's go back over here and let's get rid of Strong's again. And let's see where we're at here. Okay. It said, uh, I beheld then because of the, of the voice of the great words which the horn spank. The great words. It's great, great, great. Everything's great, right? You'll see when we go into uh, Daniel 8 that Daniel 8 is the telling of this again. The same story, the same players basically, but just told with different symbolism okay okay so let's see it says great words which the horn spank and beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning fire now this is the beast now what is the beast well i already told you the beast is the fourth industrial revolution and its leader its king is trump and will be Trump. Now, why do I say that? Well, there's more reasons, okay? And they're coming. Let's uh, let's see here. Now, like it said earlier, th these great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Four kings, four great leaders, four people who take the world stage, right, and have great power, but not of their own. Okay. It also says, uh, I'll just read on here. 
uh, then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceedingly dreadful, whose teeth were of iron, and nail, his nails of brass, which devoured and break into pieces and stamped the residue under its feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, this is the beast, the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, and of the other which came up and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had I, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake great things again. Now, at this point, if you don't, can't see that, that this is Donald J. Trump or highly, highly likely is Donald J. Trump. Um, you're stuck in a cult of personality where you still want to believe that he is going to save you. Donald J. Trump is, will, is and will never be not one of your saviors. Not one. Yet, he, by his hand, even without hand, will be the cause of the death of people that hear my voice right now. If you do not take heed very carefully. And even then, it may be difficult for many. Okay. And a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more spout, uh, stout than his fellows. Was his, whose look was more stout than his fellows? A big guy, you know. Supposedly, Donald Trump is said to be 6'3" right and according to uh, from what I've researched if you're 6 two or taller you're considered to be of in a category of your of your own you might say you're considered to be a big man six two or above I happen to be six two they say Trump is six three. And they say his son is, I think, six seven. Okay, and we're going to make notes of basically all of this. But uh, anyways, let's keep going here. Okay, so he's bigger than his fellows too, right? I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints. What did he just do? What did he just do? Two years ago. 2019 when he was leaving office and I told you he's going to be back. He's going to be back. I told you, didn't I? I even told you they were going to put Biden in and then Trump would come back. Did I not? Did I not say that many times? And what appears to be happening I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints. What did he just do? Operation Warp Speed. Where they sent out all of the airplanes from the United States military. All over the world. And all the commercial flights even. A lot of them delivering stings in the tail. What do I mean? They load cargo planes from the rear normally. All the cargo is loaded and unloaded from the rear. And I've done a video on that too. And that's in Revelations. But he made war. They even said this is a war. Didn't they? Are you still in the cult of personality? Are you still believing this man to be your future or current savior? I pray that God will remove any further scales from your eyes 
if that is the case, so that you can see and understand this clearly. Let's see here, and it says, Thus he said the fourth beast, the fourth industrial revolution, which has been going on for quite a while. They've just recently announced it. They told us about the New World Order quite a long ago, but they've just now told us about and, caught and said the fourth industrial revolution, didn't they? That is the fourth beast. The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and tread it down and break it into pieces. Are they devouring when they made war with the saints? Are they devouring the whole earth? Are they trying? Are they trying to, to get a stick, a prick, a scar of servitude into every human being on the planet? Yes. Yes, they are. They have been, and they're still trying. And what will they do? They will tread it down. They will tread down the saints. And the ten horns out of the kingdom are ten kings that arise, and, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words. Here we are with great again. Great words against the Most High and, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. What? Right? It's always been a tough one. But during prayer today, early this morning, uh, it came clear to me what this was. <clears throat> Let's talk about Trump and him reigning as king. When he becomes president again and serves another four years, will his time have been divided Will that help you now understand what given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time? See, it says, and he shall speak great words against the Most High. This is the king. They're talking about the kings. They're not talking about the overall beast at the moment which is covered above the fourth beast that's the fourth industrial revolution that's the metaverse that's everything going digital okay it says he shall speak great words against the most high like when they asked have you ever repented mr president have you ever asked god for forgiveness and he said no. He says, I try not to do anything that I need to ask for forgiveness for. Is this your savior? A man with an ego like that? Is that your savior that you won't, that you're going to follow and wonder after that beast? Are you going to wonder after that beast? that has the ego to say the things that he says and literally be bombastic. That's what he is. He's bombastic. He's a egomaniac. And he is the little horn. Yep. Okay, let's see. We're going to move on to eight here in just a second. Make sure there was, there's always something I miss and wish I would have covered, but let's see. The beautiful part of this story is, is that the end is nigh. The end is nigh. Okay. 
Okay, let's go ahead and go to eight. In the third year of the reign of King, move that there, Belshazzar, 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 kind of tough to pronounce, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel, after that which appeared unto me at the first. And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass when I saw that I was at Shushan in the palace, which is in the providence of Elam, and I saw in a vision, and I was by the river, by the water's edge. And then I lifted up mine eyes, and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns, and two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. And I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward, so that no beasts might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. And as I was considering, behold, an he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth, and touched not the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. And he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with cholera against him, and smote the ram, and brake his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he did cast down to the ground and stamp upon him. Sounds similar, familiar? And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. I don't know what that is, to be honest with you. That little yellow thing there. Therefore, the he-goat waxed very great. We go to these great words again. And when he was strong, the, the great horn was broken. And for it came up for, and for it came up four notable ones towards the four winds of heaven. Four winds again, Taurus. Four wheels. Wheels inside of wheels. And out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceedingly great. Toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And it waxed great, even to the host of heaven. And it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stepped upon them. So when you see these things coming down from the heavens, you should, if you've been watching my channel for a while, understand what these are coming down. They are the hosts of heavens and the stars being cast to the ground and the stars are angels. Ye, he magnified himself. Magnified himself? Who would do that? Ye, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, just like in, in 7, in Daniel 7. And by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. The daily sacrifice taken away? You mean people couldn't work? They couldn't make their sacrifice and do their sacrifice, which is work for the average people of this day. They had to lose their jobs, you're saying? And by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. He lost office. Remember? And an host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. 
and it cast down the truth to the ground and practiced it and prospered. Did they cast the truth to the ground and stomp on it, but it still practiced and prospered? Yes, it did, didn't it? Operation Warp Speed. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spank, How long shall the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three, three hundred days, and then the sanctuary be cleansed, will be cleansed, or be cleansed. And it came to pass, and if you do some calculations on these numbers, two thousand three hundred days, you'll you'll by the time Trump is in office, and by the time he is scheduled to leave office. You'll, you'll see that these numbers will later be proven. And it came to pass. Oh, Lordy. Hold on just a second, guys. Sorry about that, guys. It happens. I normally don't have my phone in the room with me, but today I do. I normally just, I don't even carry it. I never carry it, as a matter of fact. Like, 99%. And it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning. Then, behold, there stood a man before me as the appearance of a man. There stood before me as the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks by the water which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. And he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for, the, for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Now, as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face towards the ground, but he touched me and set me upright. And he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be in the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. The ram which thou sawest, having two horns, are the kings of Media and Persia. Okay. And the rough goat is the king of Grisha. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Now that being broken, whereas four stood up for the power of the kingdom, four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his power. And in the later time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full a king of fierce continents and understanding dark sentences shall stand up and his power shall be mighty but not by his own power and he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper and practice and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people what is he doing right now says in the latter time when the transgressions transgressors are come to the full which is now meaning they are transgressing upon all people and trying to alter the dna right that's exactly what's going on what could be the worst thing you could ever do to make god the maddest and, and most furious what is it said he flooded the earth for? Because man was not pure. And it wasn't talking about sinless. It was talking about DNA. 
and it says he understands dark sentences. And he does. And his power shall be mighty, but not by his own power. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, meaning he'll make money. And he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many and by peace shall destroy many what are they claiming safe and peace and safety what are they claiming right now peace and safety they're trying to make sure everybody is safe safe wear your mask safe safe do this do that they want you to, to be safe and they're doing it peacefully, but yet they shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without hand. And the vision of the evening and of the morning which was told is true. And the vision of the evening and of the morning, which was told is true. He was by the water's edge in the evening and the morning. When the sun goes up and when the sun goes down, when you're by the water's edge or on the mountaintops, the angels can be seen. I have seen them myself as many as a hundred times in multiple locations. And some of those stories, most of them, are on a video on my channel right now. If you want to go seek it out, it's not very far down. Probably less than 20 videos. I explain it all. how the What the angels are, what they look like, how they move, how they travel. How they leave pixie dust and sparks behind them like a shooting star. Wherefore, shut thou up the vision, for it shall be many days. The many days is coming to an end. We are in the latter time. And it says, I, Daniel, fainted and was sick certain days afterward. I rose up and did the king's business and was astonished at the vision. But none understood it. But we understand it now, don't we? Thank God. Thank Father in heaven. I pray for this knowledge. And I, I've prayed and asked for a long time for my sins to be forgiven and for, for me to be able to understand the truth because I want to be set free. And I thank God for the knowledge and the leading of me to the truth that he has done and the ability to share it with the world, which is a requirement that the word be shared with the world right now. Chapter 9, if you read it as well, okay, you will start to see as you go through this is that it is basically a retelling again of the, the same thing, part of the same story, but with some more details. Like, like uh, this again. This is nine, Daniel nine, and this is twenty-seven. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for a week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of the abominations he shall make it desolate, even until consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Poured upon the desolate. Who's the desolate? The people who take the stick, a prick, a scar of servitude. The one week is 
seven years. Seven days is seven years. And the Abraham Accord, which was signed by Trump and will mature during his next four years of presidency. And it says, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, in the midst of that seven years, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Sacrifice and oblation. For me and you, that is work. Being able to go to work, being able to go to church. Did it cease? It did. Who did it? Took credit for it? Proud of it? Donald J. Trump. And for the overspreading of the abominations across the entire world, a stick, a prick, a scarf, a servitude for anyone that will take it worldwide. Overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. And you can go back through the rest of it up here and you will see that this is a continuation of the story of now. The story, it has to do with the story of now if you go and read it. Okay, here is the second thing which is very important and may end up benefiting you in some small or great way. I considered how over the years that y'all guys have, have helped me survive. And I considered that when I ask for a CPAP, 40 or 50 CPAPs were offered up. So uh, I had so many people offering, I didn't even have time or the energy at the moment at that time to even respond to everybody. But I was able, ended up with two CPAPs, which is great in case one breaks. I have a backup in case the one I'm using breaks. But I considered all this and I thought this is, this should not be just for myself. This should not be just for myself we should I thought that I should try to build a network with the help of y'all guys that will allow us to help our brothers and sisters who need something that we have that we don't need or maybe we have too much of and we all know that you can't just go uh offering up your stuff on the internet in general and, and without some kind of a uh, method to control it because there's there's people out there that will take everything they can get and keep asking for more and that's not what this is about so we're going to take some measures in order to control access to this and the access will be to y'all guys okay now the idea is is to have someone to help me okay um, like someone who is kind of an organizer that runs a, a spreadsheet and the spreadsheet will include a lot of things. Okay. May probably a bunch of different pages, but I've had people say to me, Daniel, I have a place in such and such state and I have land that people can come and stay on. Okay. But this is these things are too much to put on top of everything I'm already doing for myself. Or I'm doing for y'all guys, actually. And for myself. But I can't do all this because this is going to take some work. So I need someone or maybe a couple of people that can work together on it. But it, I don't know exactly how much time, time it's going to take. I know it's going to take some time, 
And I know it ain't going to be an hour a week. It's going to be probably more than that. Okay. So it needs to be somebody who is decently good with a computer, familiar with a spreadsheet, that kind of thing. And we've set up uh, maybe a website or maybe we'll just use an internal spreadsheet or something, but probably embedding the, the spreadsheet into a page on the website or maybe on Patreon or something. Um, where we can have like a list of things that people are looking for and that people are brothers and our sisters. And if you don't think they're your brother and your sister, wait till you get to heaven. Who are they then? Is that just Fred from down the street when you're in heaven? I don't think so. So, like supplies like CPAPs, seeds, uh, places, camping communities, places for people to camp, food sharing. Maybe someone puts together a list and helps with a list of all the pantries or something, which a lot of that already exists out there. There's, there's lots of things that we can do with this, and we, can, we need to think big. We need to think, um, yeah, think big. We've got a lot of brothers and sisters. In the times that are coming, we're going to have a lot of brothers and sisters that need help. And I, I should not be the only one to benefit from my my work and my voice. I'm greatly thankful. I truly am. But I should not be the only one. Maybe we have uh, some uh, do some fundraisers from time to time and have some cash distributions like I've done a little bit before, but the, I've done something like that twice. Last time it actually went pretty well back in January. And I was able to help quite a few people. Um, actually, it went really well. With the exception of one or two situations, but pretty good. Um, transportation. You know, there may be ways that we can help out with getting people places they need to go. There are people going everywhere, different places all the time. You know what I mean? So this is something I want to start. I guess the first step is finding someone to help me. Okay. Okay. And the second step, I'll probably do a fundraiser to try to raise a little funds so that we can, um, like if somebody doesn't have the money to pay for shipping for something, maybe we can help them do it, you know, to get, say, in a CPAP from one location to another or or whatever it is. It could be some... some uh, antibacterial medicine or something other it could be anything because we all know that they're 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 shortness on everything right now the beast wants all of its goods back it wants all of its toys back and so we have got a lot out here and there's a lot of us that have the ability to share some nobody needs to give give so much that they put themselves in a in a terrible position, but we all have something we could give away. And maybe there's scenarios where some things have some price or cost associated with it. I don't know. I'm not sure, but I want to do this. Um, the way that you can get a hold of me is, hang on just a sec. Okay. Now again, I know there's going to be probably quite a few of you that are interested in helping, but this is what I need. I, I know I'm going to need somebody that's pretty good with the internet and decent with understanding online app, uh, online apps like spreadsheets and stuff like that and how to run a, a spreadsheet. Um, you're going to have to have some free time, quite a, you know, maybe you're retired, maybe, uh, 
maybe you just don't have to work or maybe you work for yourself or but if you're working a, a 40 to 50 hour a week grind it's going to be very difficult to impossible for you to do this and so let's right now let's don't let's those somebody that's working that much or needs to work that much because um I don't know how much or when this project will provide any funding, um, you know, but maybe we can build that into the fundraiser or something to help some. Maybe that, maybe it is a way that somebody can make a few bucks. Anything's possible. If, the, if y'all guys support it, we'll do it. But anyways, try to get a hold of me if, in fact, you feel like you really fit, Okay. And you feel like you're comfortable and you got some few skills and stuff, okay? Now, the phone number, you can, might can see it there, but it's 843-284-3343, okay? 843-284-3343. That is a Google Voice number for me. What it means is just a fake online phone number. And you can text me at it. Don't call don't call because I just don't answer that that that. it doesn't even ring I can see a thing come up a notification but it's it's something I typically ignore but you can text me and you can tell me this is what I want you to do if you text me I want you to say just these words say um Just say, helping my brother uh, campaign or project. Helping my brother project. Just text those words to me. And that's going to tell me what I need to know. Because I get other people text me other things all the time. Many of which I don't even have time to respond. And I wish that was different. I really do. But it's not different. Like right now I've got... 600 uh, texts in my Google Voice that I have not even had a chance to look at. So, understand that, that I'm doing the best I can. I don't have an assistant. I did have one for about a month, but that didn't work out. Just not enough funding coming in to be able to cover it. But it did help somewhat while she was here. She did a good job. Um, so eight, four, three, two, eight, four, three, three, four, three. And you can, uh, get involved with that. There will be instructions later as to how, what we're doing with this. Okay. So it, it's coming. It's something we're working on and assuming we can work it out, we'll bring this forward and we're going to give y'all guys some of the benefits that I have. I'm going to share those with you. Okay. All right. And let's see, last thing. As y'all guys know, I have uh, been in the situation where my lease is up. And I have been trying now for three months to find another place that I can move to that's remotely affordable. And... It's not working out. I've gotten extensions twice, 30-day extensions on my lease, but they're not going to give them to me anymore this month. And I am going to... The way I'm looking at this is that I is that God wants me to move, okay? God wants me to move, okay? So, because I'm being forced out. So, and everything here is so expensive that it's appearing that I'm going to be forced even out of here, meaning the area. And so I'm going to have to do something. So in the short term, I need to try to prepare for that. And I've went back as a, backwards and forth a thousand times in my mind trying to decide what to do. And how to, how to handle this and what what I, you know just what to do 
and it's been, been very difficult to figure out. But I'm coming down to the point where I'm understanding that the things that I read you about in the book of Daniel, that Jesus Christ said, when you see those things that Daniel talks about happening, to head for the mountains. Don't come back to get your shirt. Don't come back to get anything. In other words, when you see them altering the DNA and the other things going on, head for the mountains because the cities are going to become a death trap. The red horse, they will kill each other. He had the power to make them kill each other, basically. And that's what's going to go down in the cities. And so if God is forcing me to leave this place, which I do enjoy living right on the coast, but it appears I'm being forced to the mountains. Now, in order for that to happen or whatever happens, I'm not going to be able to do anything without y'all guys' continued support just like y'all guys have been doing for now, for years now. And if I'm going to be able to get out of here, I'm going to need a place to live. And I think you know, the best way maybe to do this is to try to get a, a used RV. So if you're out there and you happen to have a used RV that that you could sell me or that... If it's old enough of not enough value and you wanted to give it to me as a gift so that I could get out of here, um, let me know. And you can use that same number, 843-284-3343, and you can text me and just text me the words RV. If you have an RV that we might be able to work something out because I, I should be able to afford to pay something a month if you if it's something that needs to be paid for because I've been able to pay rent so I should be able to pay that I just can't afford what rent is now going for it's used to be 850 now it's like two thousand dollars and I just I can't I cannot come to y'all guys and push that kind of money out of you with a clean conscience, you know, every single month when I could do something else to stop that or to limit that. So, RV, right? So, if you, again, if you have an RV, if you know about somebody that would be willing to do something to help me, specifically in this case, 843-284-3343 and put the words just text me the words RV and I'm going to see it and I'll know what it's about I'll respond to you and then we can get into the conversation okay Um, let's see what else oh also the other thing that comes along with RV is, is again If you value the things that I bring to you, and I know for a fact many of you do, so I'm not as much speaking to you, okay? I'm speaking to people who have the ability but do not share bread with their brothers and their sisters. And they're hoarding it, all of it. And they're not willing to give the crumb off the corner. I'm more speaking to you that you should, in fact, share with your brothers, even if it ain't me. There's good people out there doing good work, making great sacrifices. I've sacrificed virtually everything to do what I've done the last 12 years. And I'm not joking. I'm not exaggerating. I've sacrificed everything. Almost. But there's nothing on this earth that's that I want so bad to go out and chase chase 
like go back into real estate and make a lot of money and there's nothing on this earth that I want. I just want to be able to do my job and survive and and I need your support in order to do that or I can't or I wouldn't be able to do this. And all the weight should not fall on the same people every month. I appreciate all the donations that come in, but all the weight should not fall on the same people. So if you can see it clear in your heart and you appreciate the work and the information that I bring to you like I brought to you in this video and many other videos, then do the right thing. And if you don't want to give it to me, give it to somebody else. But you, we all have to share. I'm sharing. You know what I share? All my time. Seven days a week. For 12 years. And that's no exaggeration. That would be, I would be within 95% of exactly that. 95% of all my time for seven days a week for 12 years. This is all I've done. But even if you don't want to give it to me, support something right somewhere that is doing something good and making a sacrifice. Because if we don't, guys like me go away. How many people that you liked are gone already? I see a lot of them are gone. Many, many. And they have to because they can't make it. Now, I'm so thankful to make it. I ain't made it 12 years. I was five, five years homeless. And I've lost two houses and two cars due to not having the money to pay for them. One house burned down. One house, the other house, got kicked out of because I couldn't pay the payment. That was about three years ago. Yeah, a little over three years ago. So, with all that being said, I think that's enough. Uh, any support you can do, you can do it through uh, Patreon. The links are all down below. You can even support what I'm doing for a dollar. And I'm sure, I'm pretty sure I'm going to tie this. This here, maybe somehow to Patreon. Where the password to be able to get into this spreadsheet will be somewhere where we know that just random people on the internet aren't getting involved in what we're doing. We want to help everybody, but we don't want to help just, we want to help people that are seeking the truth and seeking Father. Right? Okay. I'm just doing the best I can. That's all I can do. All right, guys. Um... If you're not clear on what to do on some of these things, go back and listen to part of the video again, okay? I love you. Father loves you. And we're going to be okay, but we're going to have to start working together better. And uh, so I'm going to try to do my part. Will you?